Hello everyone. Welcome to another wonderful video from the CTL series. And I am being joined here with some friends of mine, um, other Lipscomb faculty. Hello friends. Hello. And Hello. just wanted to uh, go through and share a few things about uh, working with students when you get to uh, using Zoom and some of the things that may occur and some best practices that you may consider in the meantime. So one of the major questions that has come across um, our help request form and in your academic continuity planning form is what do I do when students need to present or we have a group presentation? And so just wanted to show you some of the features that you can use in Zoom to be able to share with students uh, or so you know what to do when you're there with students. So these faculty members are my lovely students today. So one of the things that you can see right here on Zoom is that there is a green share button at the bottom of Zoom. And I have made sure that in my settings, I have um, uh, have the switch toggle to on. So that way, um, students can also share their screen. And so we can have one participant share at a time. And so if you're doing presentations, when it's a student's time to present, they can share their screen. If you're doing a group presentation, a recommendation is to have one person be in charge of kind of moving the presentation along for the group and then um, kind of working on their transitions to make it from uh, one person to the next. So we're going to start off with just that. And so I want to ask Julia if she will be willing to share her presentation with us today. Thank you, Julia. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is a presentation that I've been working on for my class that's on Saturday. And um, as you can see, I'm just trying to give them an overview of things we're going to uh, work on. And then these are our class norms that we already set together. Mm -hmm. um, so just reminding them of some things and also helping them to understand what they're going to get from this particular session with me mm -hmm. and then still do some community building. So that's how I'm looking at um, starting that class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when you when Julia, do you mind sharing again? And let's talk about a few oh, things. So you see sure. that when you're in the share feature and you are in sp speaker view versus gallery view. So um, that I am currently in gallery view right now. And so I can see the presentation on the left side. And then I have all of the participants right here um, on the right hand of the screen. Um, it may be different if you're using a tablet or a, a mobile device, just heads up on that. Uh, and I can also change how big I want each of those to be. So if I have lots of students, I can actually drag this line over to make the presentation smaller so I can see more of the heads. Uh, one of the things that I, you know, in our first demonstration here, um, and one of our best practices is to have students to mute their audio and to mute their video because there could be some distractions that come in uh, while you are presenting. Thank you, Robbie. Robbie just muted her uh, microphone. Emily's got hers muted. Debbie's now muted hers. And so only the, those who are presenting. I also uh, take the time and I mute my microphone and I also take my video and I um, stop my video. So that way it's not a distraction um, because when you present and you share your screen, um, Emily. Um, so sorry. See, once again, there's all these distractions that people are watching instead of actually watching the presentation because Julia, when she presents, Julia, what do you see on your screen right now as you're presenting? Um, well, right now I'm just seeing you because I've changed my view to speaker. Right. So you're so seeing I'm the, just seeing you and my pres and my slides. Right. So she's changed hers to be the speaker view. So only the speaker and the slide. And I'm going to change that right now. So this is what. Um, because Julia is sharing her screen, then I see her in my speaker view and the presentation as well. Uh, so, you know, that's a best practice because you don't know what kind of interruptions would come in um, per se, like 
Um, your husband walks in and wants to ask a question. A child walks in to ask a question. Um, your cat goes across your screen. You know, any of those things that might occur. Um, you can also um, take the chance. And if there's an interruption as the speaker, um, a snack. Hey, I'm on class right now. You gotta oh, go. I'll be right here. Okay. You can see that while Emily was speaking and, and she's speaking, I've got the option right here on my screen that I can automatically uh, go ahead and unmute there, Emily. Um, as the host, I have the opportunity that I can mute her. So I can go through and I could also, uh, I can stop her video as well. So I've stopped her video for now. Um, and let's say that all of a sudden Robbie is being very disruptive um, and lots of distraction going on. I can stop her video as well. So um, now it's just left to Julia, Debbie and me on my uh, gallery view. So, you know, th this is something for you to think about as you are having students present um, and they can present a lot of things. Thank you, Julia, for sharing that. I'm going to uh, switch over and toggle the speaker view. And then uh, another thing you can do right here with the manage participants, I can go through and I can now bring um, Emily, I'm asking her to start her video and I'm asking Robbie now to start her video because I went through and, and so there are a lot of right here, it's uh, at the participants tab. There are a lot of options that you can um, have as a control for the host. So you can see, you can mute them there. You can spotlight their video or pin a video or, you know, to, and you can, this is where you can also make a host or, uh, you know, lots of different things that you can do here. Um, it's also lets you choose options for them to respond. So, um, they can respond. Um, yes, no, go slower, go faster, uh, do a thumbs up, uh, you know, that they may be away. So th there's a little bit of a notification factor there for you as well. Um, Robbie, um, just to show another example, Robbie's now going to be the student who's going to uh, share a, just a regular document. And you can, and we're showing you this so you can see the different things that you're able to share. Robbie, you're muted. All right, so just an agenda from a board meeting that I had last night. Mm -hmm. Easy to share with the group. That's right, absolutely. And there are features where you can, um, if you, okay, I'm gonna, yeah, thanks. You can stop the, as the host, um, and this is really important with the Zoom bombing that's going on right now with a lot of people getting links, which is why it's recommended not to put your links um, out there publicly, just share it in email or with your, you can also do a whiteboard um, desktop as well. Um, so lots of different things. So you could pull up a Google doc and let's say it's a collaborative doc that we're all working on together. And so we would be, all be able to collaborate together on that document as well. So that's another great feature. And one of the things I recommend students have the free zoom accounts as well. And especially since they're, if you're already notifying them that you're going to be using zoom so they could practice, they could form their own meeting and be able to practice their presentations together as well. Um, so I'm going to open it up to my, uh, participants here of other best practices and tips. Uh, when, because we've all had opportunities where we've, um, been able to use Zoom um, at a synchronous time with students and some tips that you would share as well. Oh, Debbie, you're muted. <laughs> I'll go ahead. So one of the things that, um, I think you saw that in Julia's presentation actually, is that she has norms that she has already set with her class. And so since this is going to be something new for my undergrad classes, um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, talk about on our first meeting next week, um, we're going to do a Zoom session and we're going to talk about norms um, for the class now that we're transitioning um, to this virtual environment and kind of best practices, kind of like you're doing here with this video, mm -hmm. but kind of best practices of 
things to do and not to do when we're in Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a good point too. the, um, the setting the norms and the expectations. Um, I teach online primarily, and I have honestly had students coaching soccer games while we were having synchronous <laughs> sessions. And, you know, the idea is, well, I'm on the synchronous session, so I have met the expectation, but I'm seeing blue sky and this head bobbing up and down, <laughs> and he forgot and he started yelling at some of his players. Um, you know, there's, there is a tendency to take this too casually. And so I just want to amen Emily's suggestion that you set norms right up front about what will be involved in those sessions. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I would add that I don't think you can assume that every student in your class knows how to navigate Zoom. Mm -hmm. You almost, as you, the very first time you meet together on Zoom, just kind of pointing out the different ways um, that the students can navigate, how they can mute their uh, video and their microphone, um, whatever norms you want to set, like Emily said, around muting, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if the norm is or the expectation is that they're fully engaged, then maybe you always want to see the video, but you don't want to hear their background noise. So thinking through that and and really laying out those expectations and helping uh, them to know how to navigate the mm -hmm. self. Yeah, that that's a great point. You know, the first time that you meet with your students, uh, you know, don't assume that you're automatically going to go into full force with this for the first time. Um, and I know because um, I have a feeling a large number of people may be really discouraged in that and kind of do low stakes. And maybe it may be Monday or Tuesday, your first class meeting that you just are checking in, but also given the time of like, Hey, uh, Robbie, I would like for you um, to like, uh, if you will, Robbie, just put a little message into chat for everyone so we can practice using the chat feature now. Or I would like for you to do this. Um, so just, you know, as Julia said, that opportunity to kind of um, get some hands on experience themselves with using the tool. Um, and I love it because sometimes a student will share something with me and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Um, and see right here now I've got uh, this chat. Uh, going up. And so I'm able to take a look at that um, as well. And, and you can respond. And I think that's what talking about those expectations, Emily, talking about the expectations for chat as well. In one of my settings, I have toggled on where students cannot have a private one on one chat with each other during the session, they can either chat directly just to me or to everyone. Um, and that's, you know, students really need to watch that because I've had a situation where I've been in uh, a class session and a student meant to do it to just someone else and send it to everyone. And I was able to see that comment and um, was not, <laughs> uh, you know, well received um, from the instructor side of things on the comment. And so we addressed that and talked about those expectations. Other best practices. Um, my recommendation would be definitely have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. um, technology is wonderful, but as we all know, it doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. um, in doing advising during the last couple of days, several of my students thought they had good Wi-Fi and didn't. And so just definitely have a backup plan for what you're going to do if it's not working. Mm -hmm. So I would also suggest that, you know, when anytime that you do a Zoom session, you have the option to record your session. And so I think it's really important to record your sessions because, again, while everyone may intend to be in on your class session, you know, if something may happen, you know, with their Wi-Fi connection or they didn't get they forgot to log into your class, whatever it might be, so that if you can record those sessions and then post them into your Canvas page, that way students aren't missing out on what happened in class. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, you know, not everyone may have access to internet at the time in which you're having your synchronous class session. And I know for my own, you know, instance, I've got a lot of times this week where it says that my connection's unstable um, or my internet connection is low because the entire world is now uh, all conversing um, remotely. And so, you know, that's a lot of bandwidth, but it also provides an opportunity that with recording, you can, you know, students can go back and watch it later um, as they're prepping for finals and all of that good stuff. And if you're not going to hit, if you don't have the setting to record automatically, um, then maybe assign someone that they, you know, because you might want to do a quick check-in first that you don't want to record. I don't, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, assign someone of or two or three people like, Hey, it's your turn to remind me to hit the record button because you don't want to get all like 40 minutes into a 50 minute class. and like, Oh my goodness, I didn't record this. Uh, best practice is to just go ahead and record it, uh, which that will be another video that we will be uh, sharing with you about some best features with recording um, best practices because we've got some new things coming down the pike that may be beneficial for you on that. Oh, do you have any recommendations for the lengths of Zoom sessions, keeping students engaged? Um, not, I don't, you know, someone else may have that. I don't know. I think it's just, if you're doing a, a typical class session is to think about how you would structure even a 50 minute, 75 minute, three hour block, four hour block, eight hour block, or whatever configuration you have, you know, how would you kind of chunk, um, the material and the structure of your course, uh, you know, and, you know, oh, I'm going to have, you know, um, 15 minutes of, you know, lecture content or, you know, doing your mini lecture, and then we're going to have discussion. And it could be, you know, depending on your class, you can have an entire class discussion, or you might want to use one of the breakout rooms option that we all, even the basic accounts, because all the videos I did were all on basic accounts last week. Um, so that's something that you can able. So just thinking through, you know, how can I have effectively, just like you do in your face-to-face -face courses, how can you also do that in an online format? It's just a different modality, but you can still structure that way. Anything else to add? Hope, I wanted to add something to that because I'm um, in a situation where I'm currently teaching a hybrid class. And what that usually looks like is I have two um, full days where I meet with the student and then the rest are online. Well, obviously, I'm not going to keep them on Zoom for six hours at a time. So I had to go through what my content was for that face, typically face-to-face -face day and figure out what of this could be pulled out and put into a more asynchronous format mm -hmm. and what really needs to be synchronous. And so I had to go through and determine that mm -hmm. and make some differentiation within the content so that I'm not keeping them on uh, Zoom too long. Yeah, I love that. Um, and I've seen like some of the faculty with the plans of, I'm gonna record a 15 minute, you know, a couple of 15 minute lectures, and then the Zoom will be during our class time where it's open hours to ask questions, or we may come together to discuss something that was brought up in the readings or the lecture that you brought. So that's an excellent point, Julia. Mm -hmm. Anything else? It's so easy. <laughs> once, you, once you have done it a couple times, I think that's the thing is getting people through their first mm -hmm. experience with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I like the suggestion of maybe having a time where you just kind of get together and not as an official class session, but just play with it mm -hmm. and have somebody present and have somebody because it really helps them understand that, that yes you just click on it it's mm -hmm. okay <laughs> mm -hmm. right yeah and and that opportunity you know that's what i just reached out and i was like hey friends can you i know that you've done this online you know would you be willing to join me for a little chat this afternoon and let's demonstrate a few things for faculty and show them that you know it can be done um and it's a learning curve for for some people, you know, faculty and students. And so let's practice with this and thinking through, like Debbie said, you know, 
practicing, okay, I'm going to give, you know, Debbie the screen, you know, she's going to share something. And then now, then Emily's going to share it. And so what does that look like? And um, just being aware of that as well. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to add one more thing, if I could. Yes. Um, I had a conversation with another faculty member this morning and she had her class, <clears throat> excuse me, on Tuesday night. Um, and um, she basically told her students, I'm going to try breakout rooms in, in Zoom, but um, I've never done it before. So, you know, we might run into through to a, a few kinks, but um, know that we'll just work it out together. And um, so she just was very transparent and honest with them up front to say, hey, I'm learning about this together. And she said it turned out to be a great class period. And they stayed on together for two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just an amazing testimonial that I heard this morning. I love that. I love that. And, and I think we're going to hear more of that as we go along in this process. But, you know, being that transparent, I feel like I've never done this before. Um, let's let's see how this works. And, you know, but also, you know, getting feedback from students as well. You know, we're, we'll need to continue to, especially for those of us who have taught online for a long time, you have to, it's the holistic view of, of these students who are not face to face with us every single day of kind of checking in academically, but also, you know, how are you doing um, and, and adding in some of those things, but also seeking their feedback of like, Oh, I really like this, the, you know, um, this, this, worked really well or you know that was a nice try dr n but um it just didn't quite work and i'm like i know i know and i can own it <laughs> yeah excellent anything else while well, i have my group of faculty friends here and i know robbie and debbie both had opportunities where you all had like dissertation defenses um uh, as well this week yeah mm-hmm and they survived and you survived. <laughs> yeah, it went very well. Um, you know, the committee members were able to move into a breakout room um, to discuss after the defense occurred. And then we went back into the room. So again, we used all the features that Zoom offers, um, even for something as momentous as, you know, defense of a dis dissertation. Mm -hmm. I thought the breakout using the breakout rooms for the faculty for the deliberation was really a great idea. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that's a great idea. And thinking about for some faculty who may be having senior projects or senior design projects that um, so how did you all kind of organize, you know, getting you all into the breakout room? Um, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just had, you know, one person who set up the breakout rooms and because we initially thought we were going to have to have separate Zoom sessions, mm -hmm. but the breakout rooms totally took care of the situation. That's great. Yeah. And so thinking about some of these senior projects that will be coming down um, in a, you know, few, few weeks um, and using Zoom to do that and then having the faculty to kind of go into the breakout room. I love that. On that. Emily, did you have something else to add? I was just going to add, I know that we've kind of talked about students. You know, this is going to be new for students too, but Robbie and I both have been in advising this week and um, all of my sessions, advising sessions have been through Zoom and my students have really handled it very well. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised and I think, I think I had one maybe who had used them before and the rest had never used it. And mm -hmm. you know, this kind of jumped in and we worked through things and I felt like the advising sessions went well, and I think they were happy to just kind of have contact with right. them. So, I, you know, I think that this is going to be a positive thing for our students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about all the, um, in the professional setting, all the remote meetings that occur um, and having to think through these best practices as well. So we're just giving them a heads up on some real world opportunities. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Yeah. We used on Tuesday, we used it to conduct 12, yeah. I think maybe 14 or 15 writing assessments for people that are applying to the EDD program. 
and Zoom is just so incredibly flexible. Mm -hmm. It worked. It worked flawlessly. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact we were having severe storms, and, and one of the participants was under a tornado watch, but, mm -hmm. but overall, um, you know, it was just so so smoothly conducted. Mm -hmm. Worked very well. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, I want to just say thank you to all of you all for participating and jumping in this afternoon um, as we are continuing to um, adapt and learn new things and, and sharing your own experiences as well. So it's not just coming from CTL experience. We have some faculty members to share um, their experiences as well. So thank you, ladies, so much. Good thank to see everybody. <laughs>